Hi, and welcome to PurePort's Multi-Cloud in Minutes video series. This is the first in a series of videos focused on multi-cloud networking using the PurePort multi-cloud fabric. My name is Johnson Cawthon, and I lead the Solutions Engineering Group for PurePort. In this video, I will connect an AWS VPC to an Azure VNet using AWS Direct Connect and Azure Express Route private networking, linking them together using PurePort's multi-cloud router as the Layer 3 connection broker in between. This private network will give me low latency and consistent network performance between the two. Before I get started, you should be aware that I've already created a VPC in AWS and I've attached it to a virtual private gateway and from there to a Direct Connect gateway on the AWS side. Similarly, I've created a VNet in Azure and attached it to an ExpressRoute virtual network gateway. The first step to multi-cloud connectivity is to create a new network in the PurePort console. Once that's complete, a map of our five core locations will appear and we can start adding cloud connections. We'll start with a direct connect to my AWS account by selecting direct connect as a connection type. Next I'll select US East as the AWS region and pair that with PurePort's Washington DC location. Next I'll select private peering type to connect to my VPC and then specify a speed for the connection. Next I need my AWS account ID which I'll paste in from the clipboard. We'll stick with the default AWS ASN and skip past customer network and NAT configuration which are only required if you want to set up NAT and we'll cover those in a later video. Finally I add a short name and click add. On the back end, our platform is reaching out to the AWS API and provisioning Direct Connect circuits across redundant network connections into AWS. It passes the account ID to AWS to identify which customer the circuits are for. We're also provisioning a pair of highly available routing gateways across redundant hardware engines and discrete network paths within our facility. These routing gateways form a part of the distributed multi-cloud router that provides network peering and connectivity for each link that you add to your PurePort network. Once those are up, we'll use the BGP configuration information provided in the PurePort console to complete the peering on the AWS side for both the primary and secondary connections. Note that PurePort has intelligently allocated all the necessary network primitives for us, so we're not having to come up with IP addresses, autonomous system numbers, or even a BGP peering password nor are we having to track any of those details in an external documentation system. So moving over to the AWS console, you'll see the two new Direct Connect circuits there waiting in the ordering state, waiting for us to come in and accept them. I'm going to drill down into each of them and click Accept. Once accepted, they will enter a pending state while AWS completes the circuit build. Uh, and this will take just a few minutes after which they'll enter the available state and we can come back in and complete the peering with the PurePort multi-cloud router. While those are building, let's switch over to the Azure portal and start setting up our Express Route circuits. The Express Route process differs from the Direct Connect process, and we will first create the Express Route circuits, after which we'll be given a service key that will be used to connect our PurePort network to Express Route. I'll click Create a New Resource, Filter to Express Route, select Express Route, and then click Create. We'll give the circuit a name. And select Equinix as the provider. Then select Washington, D.C. as a location. and choose the circuit speed. We'll select the metered bandwidth option. If you plan to use the circuit full time at a relatively high utilization, it may make more sense to go with the unlimited model, depending on cost, but for the purposes of the demo, we'll stick with the metered model. Finally, we'll assign a resource group, and then click Create. It'll take just a few minutes for the circuit creation to complete, 
after which we'll come back in, open up the circuit details, and copy the service ID to be pasted into the PurePort console when we're creating the connection on that side. While that's being created, let's jump back over to the AWS console. It looks like our Direct Connect circuits are completed and we'll now create a virtual interface for each and complete BGP peering. So we'll open up the primary circuit, click Create Virtual Interface, we'll choose Private Peering, we'll give the interface a name, and next we'll select the Direct Connect Gateway, which I've already created. Next we'll need the values from the PurePort console to finish the BGP peering configuration. Real quickly, we see that both of our routing gateways are up on the PurePort side and the BGP status is pending. We'll copy the ASN and jump back over to the AWS side and paste the ASN into the first field. We'll drop down the additional settings and then continue to copy and paste from the PurePort console the three other values that are required to complete the peering. The last one is the BGP peering password. We'll scroll down and click the Create button. We'll run through the same steps for the secondary circuit. Jumping back to the PurePort console, we want to make sure that we're grabbing the values from the secondary gateway, as most of these values differ from the primary. So going back to the list of VIFs, you'll see that the two new VIFs are in a state of pending. And again, within a few minutes, they will be available and BGP peering will complete and come up. While those are building out, we'll complete the express route build on the Azure side. Dropping down the notifications, we can see that the express route circuit has completed the build. We'll open up the details by clicking go to resource. We see the provider state is currently in a not provision status while Azure waits for us to provision the circuit. So we'll copy the service key to the clipboard, jump back to the PurePort console, and click Add Connection. Choose Express Route as a type, select a, an Azure region, pair that with the PurePort DC location. We're going to use private peering to connect back to our Azure VNet. We're going to select a speed. We're going to paste in that service key that we got from the Azure console, or the Azure portal, rather. Again, we're going to jump over networks and NAT configuration and shorten up the name just a little bit and click Add Connection. So again, we're making an API call out to Azure, provisioning that redundant express route circuit across our connections between them and us. And then we're going to provision again two of those virtual routing gateways on the PurePort side. Again, built out fully HA across redundant hardware and discrete network paths. Uh, and again, you'll see here on the PurePort console that we have negotiated and generated all of the information that you need uh, to complete the peering on the Azure side. Back in the Azure portal, the circuit is showing in the not provisioned status. Within 5 or 10, maybe 15 seconds, it should change over to provisioned. Then at that point, we can open up the Azure Private Peering Console and complete the peering using the values provided back in the PurePort console. So there, the circuit just flipped over to provisioned. We'll open up the Private Peering Configuration dialog and copy and paste those values from 
the PurePort console. Note that with Azure, we only have to do this once. It is a redundant circuit, but it's a single configuration dialog that handles both. And finally, the shared key for BGP peering. And click Save. So after a few minutes, that'll complete. And we'll see the BGP status in the PurePort console come up. In the meantime, let's check the status of our AWS peering. Switching connections, we see that BGP peering is up on the primary gateway on the PurePort side, but it is still pending on the secondary connection. There's one more thing that we need to actually do on the AWS side in order to make the VPC routing table receive routes from our PurePort network and by extension from our Azure VNet and that is to enable route propagation. This is a really important step and something that's easy to miss or forget. So we're going to jump into our VPC itself, uh, select the route table. There's the route table that goes with our VPC. Click on routes there, you'll see the local route. Go to the route propagation tab. Route propagation is off by default, so we're going to go ahead and enable that. And then once that's enabled, We'll jump back over to the Azure console and take a look at our status there. All right, it looks like our private peering is, is complete and provisioned. The last thing that we need to do is add a connection to that express route gateway between our VNAT and, uh, and that express route circuit, rather. So again, we'll choose that, uh, that private virtual private gateway that we created uh, before the video started. Pair the two, and again, this will take just a minute or two to complete. We'll jump back over to the PurePort console, give it a quick refresh. Now we see that the secondary gateway, uh, BGP peering is now up on the secondary gateway between PurePort and AWS. Jumping over to the Azure circuit, we see the BGP peering is up there as well. So let's do one last quick refresh and see if the routing tables have updated. And in the Azure gateway, we see the Azure network pointed back towards the remote peer. And we also see the AWS network listed and tagged with the AWS name. Jumping over to the AWS connection, we see the inverse. We see the Azure route is tagged with a name showing which network connection it was learned from. And we also see the AWS route there pointed back towards the remote peer. So at this point, we've got a full private network built out between our AWS VPC and our Azure VNet. I hope we've demonstrated how quickly and easily PurePort's multi-cloud fabric allows our customers to connect multiple cloud environments. In subsequent videos, we'll add Google Cloud to the mix and then connect in into a customer premises location via IPsec VPN. From there, we'll go on to publish several videos showing how you can get private connectivity into S3, into the various Microsoft Azure PaaS functions, uh, and into Google Private Access as well. Thank you, and uh, be sure to check out our other videos on YouTube and visit www.pureport.com today to give us a try.